I would like to begin by saying congratulations. Congratulations to each of you for making it here, for pushing through an incredibly difficult, rigorous, and impressive degree at BYU. Congratulations to those who seriously consider dropping out, but who stuck with it. Congratulations to those who tackled the challenge of bearing and raising a child while studying. Congrats to those who were insane enough to get married mid-semester and still somehow survive. And congrats to those of us who are still single and who have made it through four years of jokes about when are we going to get married. <laughs> Congratulations to those who at some point felt alone or afraid or uncertain while here. To those of us who have struggled with our faith and to those who have strengthened it. Congratulations to my siblings of color, my LGBTQ friends. That's right, that's right. To students who are walking with mental illness. To all those who constantly have stood in the face of adversity to make our campus better for future generations. You are seen, you are loved, and today you are here to celebrate. In the course of our time at BYU, we have witnessed historic events among these hallowed halls well worth celebrating. We have seen new buildings rise up, old policies change, a shift to two-hour church, and my personal favorite, the introduction of fully caffeinated Coca-Cola in the will. <laughs> I'm sure that among each of these moments, you and your friends share your own memories that you are celebrating today and will cherish forever. For me, I'm here to celebrate a few of my own personal victories. The first happened my freshman year. It was a warm September morning, and I was walking to my class when I felt a mysterious person pull me to the ground and knock the wind right out of me. Perplexed at who would do kind of a rude thing, I looked up to see not a student running away, but a deer. <laughs> yes, I was actually hit by a deer. It wasn't long before this was on the campus Snapchat story, and I affectionately became known as the deer boy. Resulting from this incident was a popular universe article, a few memes, and even a hernia surgery. Yes, the deer quite literally knocked the guts out of me. Today, I would like to tell that deer that it did not get the best of me. I'm still here, and I'm still hungry for venison. <laughs> now, my second victory is not mine alone, but that of my family, and especially my mother. Three years ago, I was on campus when I received a call that would forever change my life. My parents informed me that my mom had been diagnosed with terminal cancer. I had no idea how quickly the world could turn upside down, how instantaneously my perspective could change. I learned better how to cherish and who to cherish. Now I am proud to say that my mom is here in this audience today. We don't know what awaits us or her, but we are learning to celebrate the time we do have left. It is a daily victory to have my mom here to remember what really matters. In the Book of Mormon, Enos is described as having his soul hunger of crying out to the Lord in mighty prayer and supplication. As I'm sure many of you have felt, I recall countless times here at the Y where I have battled and fought in prayer with my Maker. It was in these quiet moments of pain and confusion that I felt another triumph. That of coming to terms, not with who I thought I should be, but who the Lord has made me to be. As such, I stand before my family, friends, and graduating class today to say that I am proud to be a gay son of God. Thank you to my parents, to my friends, and my mentors here at BYU who have offered support and helped me remember my divine potential here on this earth. Four years ago, it would have been impossible for me to imagine that I would come out to my entire college. It is a phenomenal feeling, and it is a victory for me in and of itself. Perhaps there are those of you here today who are afraid or uncertain about how to deal with the unique challenges that you face. I hope that my stories can serve as a reminder that BYU has given us the foundation to face difficult problems, both secular and spiritual, 
and that of the Lord, all things are possible. As I conclude here today, I ask you all to consider, what are you here to celebrate? What are your victories the world needs to know? I can promise that your story is important and your place in this world invaluable. Remember this. As I look around the Marriott Center, I am overwhelmed by the sense of greatness that each of you exude. Among us are future doctors, lawyers, teachers and leaders, mothers and fathers and dreamers and doers, people who will change the world. Perhaps even more importantly, are the people who will change each other and the people who will change themselves. The atonement of Jesus Christ is perfect and everlasting. And through our Savior, we too can become perfect. No matter our trials, no matter our triumphs, we are here today to become the better version of ourselves. And as we leave our campus for the last time today, may we continue on our path to victory. And ultimately, we will succeed. Behold, this is my work and my glory, to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. What could be better to celebrate? Thank you.